Hi, I'm Lynn Schultz and welcome. In this video, um, I want to have kind of a quick guide or a tutorial on how to write harmonies when you don't have a whole lot of theory knowledge. So, um, I want to teach how to come up with harmonies in basically two contexts. Um, the first one is when you have a chord in your head that you have to get it out um, so that you can write it or so that you can put it into um, a doll, whatever you are composing. Um, and then the second method is when you have like a melody, you don't have any harmonies um, that go beneath it, you don't have any idea on um, like how to come up with harmonies, right? So if you have a chord in your head or if you have harmonies in your head, um, we will try to get those out of your head so that you can write it and so that you can show to other people. So if you have a chord in your head, it's important to start with the basics of it you need to find um, the lower and the highest notes um, in the chord. This might get a little complicated um, because it depends a lot on your ear, it depends on your musical knowledge. So when you are beginning, it will be extremely hard to do this, but um, as soon as you practice this, as soon as you do more of this, you will get better and you will um, be more effective in searching those chords. So like, I will do everything with uh, a C major chord because it's simply, um, it, it's simpler to explain, basically. A C major chord is this. It has a C, a E, and a G on it. So uh, it's very simple. Um, if we think about this chord, it's basically a triad. I won't get into the theory of what, it, what this is. So if you don't know this, I would recommend you search what is a triad, what are chords, because it is important to know the very basics of this and I won't get into this into this video. Okay, so basically we have our C major chord. Let's imagine we have this chord in our heads and we can't um, get it out. We don't know what it is yet. So there are many ways of playing the C major chord. So first of all, it's important for us to understand if we're playing it on a wider way, if we're spreading it across the piano or if it's in a very close position. So for example, um, this like this way of playing the C major chord is very close. All the notes are close to each other. We have the C, we have the E and the G like very close to each other, but we can play the same chord like this. Um, you know, like kind of like this. So the chord is basically the same, except we are spreading it differently on the piano or in the orchestra, whatever context we're composing for. So first of all, it's important to kind of understand what sound we have in our heads, because if we have a very open position, then it's important to kind of uh, crunch all those notes together so that you have an easier job um, taking those notes out of your head. So um, first of all, think about this, just try to understand, like if you have very low notes and very high notes, um, then you probably have this very open position. Um, if you have like notes that are very close to each other, you have this closed position. So let's say we have the um, C major chord. We just have to hear the um, like the bottom and the top notes because this is important because these are the easiest notes to hear because they are either very at the bottom or very at the top, they kind of stand out. So let's say we have this inversion. We have to, first of all, uh, try to hear it like the bottom notes in our head. So like this bum, and then the, the top notes is like this bum, you know, like I, I can't sing, you know, you can clearly hear that. But if you have, sorry, this, then we have to hear those two notes because they stand out. After we have this, um, if we already have a little bit of theory knowledge, we can perhaps try to um, kind of understand what this chord is, we have a C and an E, then perhaps we know that those chord, those two notes are present in a C major chord, and then we could perhaps figure it out that this is a C major chord, then like everything would be a little bit easier, we would just find the G on it. If not, we have to try to find the notes that are in between um, by ear once again. If you don't have theory knowledge, then we have to try to grasp what notes are in between. I'm doing this in a fast way just so that I can explain the methods. It might take like perhaps half an hour for you to figure this out. Like it might take a lot of time if you are beginning. So um, don't expect this to be easy. Like for example, um, sometimes people can't even, even hear the notes that are in between. So like uh, they only hear this, but they don't hear the in between, you know, so it's important for you to make an effort to find what's in between. So we, if we know that we have like this kind of full sound, 
uh, in the bottom I can hear a perfect fifth, which is the G and uh, C and G. It's um, for me I can understand that, and I can hear that we have this E in octaves, so I would be able to find this chord. If not, just play around around with it. Find the lowest, find the highest notes, and then try playing like notes in between. Sometimes you will play like. It is kind of crunchy, so I like I don't have this E here, and then it's lighter. You just try to understand what sound is in your head. Like something important to have in mind um, to help you under find those middle notes is um, you have to kind of analyze the sound in your head because in this case we have kind of this full sound in this range particularly, but we could play the same C major chords as I said like this. Sorry. Um, kind of like this. This is very open, we have like a C um, down here, then we have a G in here, and then we have an E up there, you know? The, the chord is spread very widely, and it sounds um, kind of like empty in the middle. So we have to have this in mind. So like when you are, we are listening to it, we have to understand whether our chord is very full, like because perhaps we can have something like like all of this being played at once um, and sometimes we might have just this you know and if we kind of analyze the, the chord in our heads like only the sound of it if it's full if it's like um, well balanced for example we have uh, like this well spread kind of like spreading of the notes really or if we have like, uh, like not that much here on the bottom and then a lot on the top like just try understanding it because it will help you um, kind of figure out where things are. So if you hear like not that much going on the bottom and a lot on the top, then you will have to find things here on the top of the piano and like the opposite is also true. So just try finding a way that works the best. So now let's say you don't have a chord in your head. Let's say you don't have this C major chord in your head. You know, you don't have any sounds in your head, but you just have a melody. Um, you have to find chords to go beneath it, right? So the thing is, um, melodies are very, like, they, they can go on different um, scenarios and on different contexts. Um, but, like, sometimes you construct a melody that will already work with a particular chord progression. So, like, sometimes the chord progression and the melody are very woven together and you can't separate them, but sometimes you just have a melody that is very simple. Like, like something like this. Um, like sometimes you can um, predict the melody that directly from the uh, the chord because if you have this, we are playing C, E, and G. That is already a C major chord, so we can play a C major chord beneath um, this melody. You know, it's very simple, but sometimes the melody gets a little bit more complicated, and we have to find chords to work beneath it. So. A quick method you can use is you can think um, which chords can go beneath each note and where do you need new chords. So for example, if we have a G, um, this is basically a note. There's no harmony that is being implied in here and we can put basically every chord beneath it. But we have to think what chords would give different um, feels to it. So let's say um, if it's a G, we could play a G chord, a G major chord. Or a G minor chord, right? The G can be the root. However, if we think about it, we can also play other chords beneath it. If we think that the G is actually the third of a chord, we can play E minor or E flat major with the same note. And all of this only using G in the melody. We can also think that this is um, the fifth of a chord, so we can have C major and this is the fifth, or C minor, and this is the fifth. We can also think that this is the seventh of something, so we can have an A minor seventh, so uh, we can also have A major seventh, if it's the dominant of something, you know, so like the dominant of G. Um, we can also have, um, for example, it being the major seventh of something, so it would be the major seventh of uh, A flat major chord, so have like this kind of thing going on. Um, it can be the ninth of something, so you can use it on an F major chord. Um, we can use it on an F minor chord. 
can be uh, a flat ninth of something which would be um, of a F flat F sharp minor chords like it sounds very dissonant but it can be um, it can be a whole lot of stuff so you just have to think like this note on the melody like let's say you have like this kind of melody it falls on the G uh, you can have a G uh, major chord beneath it, but perhaps you have like this same arpeggio going down But you don't want to fall on this G major, which would be the most obvious one. You want to fall on something different Perhaps you can uh, make it fall on an E flat major, so like You know, it sounds like different. It, it, the B um, natural in the B flat clash, creating this, but it sounds nice when you get used to it. So like, you know, so you have different contexts in which you can uh, use different co chords for different melodies. So um, whenever you have a moment in in which you feel like you need another chord, um, then you can search for which chords will work with this particular note you have in that moment. This is like this. Sounds easy when I explain, perhaps it doesn't even sound easy if you're at the very beginning, but this is something that might take a lot of time for you to like actually find the right chords for each moment. If you have theory knowledge, everything gets easier. Like perhaps you um, can analyze the like the point you're in, um, in the, the harmony, and then you see where you can go, it gets easier, it really does. But um, if you have nothing and like not not much knowledge in music theory, or you have no knowledge in music theory, perhaps you can just search for things you like the sound of, and um, that that works even if you're a pro. Like if you have years of experience, you can simply improvise, like search for stuff you like the sound of, and that's already great. So like that's just a quick method. Um, it won't like make the job easy, but it will make the job doable for you, you know, and uh, take your time doing this kind of stuff. Uh, if you are beginning, if you want to harmonize something or compose something, please know that your first pieces, your first harmonizations won't be great. They will be beginnerish, they will be amateurish, right? But you can finish those as soon as possible and then you move to the next one and you move to the next one and you will build up um, your skills and things will become easier. So. Um, you just have to think like whether something um, deserves a whole lot of work or if something just deserves to be finished so that you can move to another project. Well, that's basically it. Um, I hope this helped you um, in some way. Um, I hope this helps you compose uh, amazing songs. Um, if it did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe because I will post a lot more videos like this, um, a lot more tutorials that will help you um, achieve um, things in your musical career hopefully um, and if you liked it let me know in the comments if you have any more questions that i can perhaps help you with um, leave it in the comments and i will create a google form in which you can leave questions for me to do whole videos about it so like perhaps you have some some questions you need to have answered you know and you want to see me trying to give it a go right so um, just leave that in the google form and i'll make uh, videos about the stuff you have questions about so um, thank you a lot for watching i'll see you next time